For five and a half years now, we have lived here inside this 700 square foot yurt. When we first got married, we lived in a one bedroom apartment. It was tiny. That didn't last too long. No. And after that, we upgraded and moved into a two bedroom duplex. That was nice, it was comfortable. And then we had the mindset, like most people have, that you just need more space. Yeah. So we ended up buying our first home in the city. And it was 2,600 square feet and four bedrooms, two bathrooms, you know. And prior to that, I hadn't grown anything. I never had a garden before. But around that time, I was wanting to grow more food. And then we started having these things called children. Yes. <laughs> and then I really was inspired to grow even more and provide healthier food for our family. So we decided that we were going to be homesteaders. Yep. So we sold our home in the city and then bought a yurt and moved outside the city in the country to start a homestead. I think the biggest reason we wanted to move into a yurt is because it was cost effective. I ended up finding our yurt on Craigslist and it had all the flooring and floor joists and everything to go with it. And at that time, we really wanted to get out of town and it was about the only way that we could afford to do it. So fast forward five and a half years and now we're here. And along the way, we were trying to build our homestead and farm and figure out how we're gonna make this thing work financially. So there was a lot of things and projects that got put on the back burner, which included doing some of the things to our yurt, our home, to make it more homely. Yeah. So now that we're able, now that we're at a point where we feel like our homestead is established, now's the time that we want to start making some of the renovations and upgrading it the way that we want it to be, to be nice and cozy. And here recently, we started the first day of our yurt renovation. Well, today is day one that we're starting some of the renovations on our yurt. For some time now, we have been wanting to put some underpinning, some underskirting around it just to help keep things insulated and to make the heating and the cooling more efficient. That's one of the mistakes that we made in the beginning is not putting it on from the start, but sometimes you have to learn things the hard way. But today, we're getting it started and we're getting this thing wrapped up. Good morning, Micah. Good morning. What you doing? Taking the wagon with me and putting that in. Put, taking the wagon with you? Mm -hmm. All righty, you're doing a great job. Some time ago, I started the process of trying to do some underpinning, but as I was doing it, I was having a lot of difficulty. So I decided once we were able to go ahead and finish doing the underpinning, to have the budget and the resources to do it, that uh, I was gonna have somebody who actually knew what they were doing help me out. So we invited Evan and his wife Kyra from McNary Construction to give me a hand in getting this job done. The first thing that we had to do before we started putting up our metal underpinning was to remove the drip edge that we had going around the side of our yurt. And as we were removing this drip edge, I was kind of reluctant to do so, not knowing what I would find as I would take it off and start looking inside the yurt. So thankfully I'm not seeing any molding under here, but what I am seeing is toys. <laughs> Different toys that are just falling out of here. Socks, glitter, you never know what you're going to see. We will have the kids clean this up. Messy. Mostly markers. That one is a tight one. So after we removed all the drip edge, next came time to go ahead and start measuring and cutting our metal for our underpinning. And even though Evan has years of construction in his background, this was his first time working on a yurt. 
Evan is a custom craftsman and owner of McNair Construction. They do home remodeling as well as work on alternative homes such as tiny homes and in this case yurts. Hey Evan, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Alright, how are things coming along here? It's Not, looking really good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're coming along here, putting some, uh, some metal siding on the underneath your, your yurt here. So There we go. So uh, since you hadn't done this before, right now are you just figuring things out? or? Right now we're we're figuring out how to how to work on a roundhouse. It's a little out of square, so for for now we gotta we gotta learn a new way to do this. Um, but I think it's gonna look really nice once we're done. Fantastic! So. We really appreciate you being here helping us out. Absolutely. So I'm here just in time to give Evan a hand. I'm gonna cut some rebar here to help secure the panels in place. Isn't that right? That's what you have me doing, right? That's right. That's absolutely. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. How, How are you doing in here? Good. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, got a couple of these. Progress here. There we go. Uh, I think if we can get a level on this, on the metal. Okay. Then uh, we'll drive a couple of these stakes in. Okay. And then figure out what to where we're. Uh, where we're lining up here. Okay. Bring it out. Right there. So with the underpainting, we're putting the metal around the perimeter of the roundhouse, <laughs> as well as putting wood studs up to hold it in place and the rebar is going down below to keep it from swaying that way. And as it was taking shape, you can really feel the strength coming in. And with a structure or uh, something that's round, it's amazing the strength that a circular object can have. And that curvature of the metal is a lot stronger than you would think it would be. Okay, so with cutting the rebar, it's making our blade go dull a lot faster than we want it to go. So uh, we don't have another backup blades and we really want to try to get as much progress done on this project that we can. So we're going to use our rebar cutter that we have on the property. And uh, here's the rebar cutter right here. However, for it to work properly, it needs to be attached to something. So we're going to need to secure it down to something and then put some weight onto the platform that we secure it to. I think one of these pieces of wood will work right here. Alrighty, so it's attached to a new piece of wood. The last piece was brought it out, so got a new one here. Now we just need some weight to hold it down because as I start to do it, uh, it will move on you. So uh, I think we'll have um, ask Lacey to back a car onto this piece of wood to give it some really good weight. Hey, could you do me a favor? What you need? Can you back the truck onto this piece of wood for me? Okay. <laughs> sure. Alright, so if you could just back onto it just a little bit right onto the wood. I think that should be enough weight for me as I'm trying to cut the rebar for it not to be flipping right back up on me. Let's hope so. Yeah, that's what it was doing before. All right, watch out. And let me tell you, cutting this rebar was quite the workout. I started getting fatigued pretty quickly. And there was one time I tried this move, I really don't know what I was thinking, but this is what happened.
Yep. <laughs> and then he had to call in the reinforcements. <laughs> yep. Mike and Josiah came and they couldn't cut it. I thought you were going to cut the rebar. What's happening? <laughs> cut that bar. A little harder, isn't it, than you thought it would be? Come on, Michael. Got teamwork going now. Can you get it done? Uh, no. no. <laughs> yep, even Mike and Josiah tried to cut it, but it just didn't have enough weight behind them no. to do it. No. So, you came to help me out. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> here I am. I'm bringing the weight. <laughs> I didn't say that, <laughs> but it was nice to have an extra hand because after I was going through it, man, it was, I was getting my heart rate up for sure. I've been dreaming so much lately about your face when you're smiling. Oh, Dad, it's the only thing that saves me. Mm -hmm. Hey, I don't know if I told you that I think you're beautiful and how I can't wait to hold you. Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down And I don't know what I would do without you Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down Whew. So, that's so much easier that's another person <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much You're welcome Hey, Micah While I'm catching my breath, can you put those bars into the gorilla car? Uh -huh. Throw them in So after we cut all the rebar, I took him back around to the back side of the yurt to where Evan was. And I bet he was wondering what in the world was taking me so long to cut the rebar. Sorry it took me so long. Oh, no, you're we good. had to readjust our system. The wood rotted on the rebar cutter, uh, so I had to uh, replace it. No <laughs> but man, it looks great on. here. Making some progress for sure. We'll be done in about five man, minutes. Man, there we no. go. <laughs> So after all this, we really got a good flow of things and it was just really neat seeing it all coming together with the yurt, the underskirting and underpinning just being wrapped around side. And it just really makes a really neat difference seeing that down there, not having that open space under a house. And I'm sure it's going to help a lot with the heating and, and cooling in the summertime of just keeping a nice balanced temperature inside. And I just really love the aesthetics of it too. Just that brown really pops with the green. It does, it looks really good. So that was day one of renovating our yurt. We still have a lot more to do. We're gonna actually take the exterior walls and change them out to make real walls in real windows. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And there's a number of things that we're doing around the inside as well. So the big renovation project for the yurt is underway. Well, we have a lot more to do with our yurt renovation, so make sure you stay tuned for the progress that we have with our yurts, as well as we got a number of projects that are going on going on, on the farm right now. Don't we always? So it's like I'm trying to get caught up, and I don't know if we'll get caught what up. That, what was that look? Oh, oh, swimming, swimming, okay. You look like you were hot and swimming at the same time or something like that. It was a little strange. Oh, so. Oh, anyways, 
make sure you stay tuned for the progress that we're making and if you haven't subscribed already make sure you click the subscribe button down below and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video because we have ducklings on the farm some new ducklings some chicks and we're also clearing out a new area to be expanding our garden areas this year so there's really a lot going on so make sure you don't miss an episode that's it for now we'll see you next time and as always be strong and grow bye